Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Friday, July 29th, 2016 to you all. It's the end of another trading month here for 2016. Getting ready to go into August, of course, and still in the thick of uh, earnings season, as well as uh, some other things that have been going on in the markets as well. Well, welcome to today's presentation, our Power Options Radioactive Trading Open Forum Q&A session. Uh, it's great to see you all here. Uh, before we begin, we just want to introduce, of course, what is Power Options? Well, Power Options is a patented suite of search and analysis tools designed for self-directed options investors. Ernie Zarenner created the Power Options tools back in 1997, essentially to trade his personal account. And since then, over the years, we've, of course, enhanced the tools and added to the different capabilities of the features on Power Options uh, to support various options traders. With our tools, you can search across the universe of options and identify only those positions that match your personal risk reward tolerance in a given strategy. Once you have identified those positions, you can quickly do further research and analysis on the stocks or the options as well and compare the risk versus reward as well as run what-if scenarios. In addition to that, we do offer a powerful set of portfolio tools to help you paper trade, track, and manage your positions. We do offer countless educational articles, help videos, help tutorials, and archived webinars to help you get more familiar with the tools on the site and track your positions as well. Now, we've been in business, I mentioned, for over 17 years, but everyone here at Power Options uses these tools to trade their personal account, myself included, so we have many more years of combined trading experience. Now, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Mike Chupka. I am the Director of Education here at Power Options. I've had the great pleasure of working with Ernie Zarenner and the Power Options staff for about the past 14 years. I do handle a lot of the uh, webinars, of course, the free coaching sessions and the education on the site. I have co-authored two books with Ernie, and I've also presented various uh, seminars and webinars across the country, uh, places such as Texas and Atlanta, uh, Carolina, and Chicago as well. Uh, in any case, let's talk about why we're here today. Our process and procedures for this afternoon's presentation, when you logged on to the webinar, the GoToMeeting, GoToWebinar platform would have appeared on your screen. Inside that platform is a question pod. Just use that pod to send us your questions. Please feel free to ask as many questions as you want. Um, we're, of course, scheduled to be here from 4.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. But if we have a high volume of questions, we'll be more than happy to stay on a little bit extra to make sure all questions are handled. Your questions can really be about anything. If you have questions about general options, strategy, and education, uh, along the lines of what is a better, a covered call, for example, or a naked put, what type of covered call should I be looking at? How do I research a long call position? How do I manage a spread trade is one of the most popular questions that we get here as well. Or if you have questions about delta, gamma, theta, identifying a position that makes sense for a given strategy, that's all fair game. If you have specific questions about tools on power options, please feel free to throw those our way as well. And of course, if you have any questions about the concepts of the limited risk radioactive trading techniques, that's also open as well. Our basic ground rules, don't be shy. Please feel free to ask any questions that you want. Remember, this presentation is designed for you to have an open and free forum to have your questions answered. Be patient. There might be one or two questions ahead of yours, but as I mentioned, we will get through them all. I also want to encourage you to feel free to help us help others. If a question comes in and I give a response based on my market experience and what I've done in my personal account, but you, of course, have a uh, different way of approaching a strategy or a different way of managing a strategy, I want you to use the question pod and send that to us and we'll share that with the main audience as well. Uh, most important, let's have fun. Let's get some good education under our belt, of course, as we head into the weekend and um, let's see what we've got in store for us for August of 2016. I'm going to transfer over now to the Power Options suite of tools. That's what we're going to use here to illustrate our, uh, all the questions that do come in as well. So we'll just navigate over there. What we're looking at here is a trial account at Power Options. And of course, for those of you that are just starting out with a trial right now, I want to encourage you to follow the four steps that are outlined right here at the top. You want to make sure that you take advantage of that free quick start guide. You can go through some of the flash tutorials to get a little bit familiar with the navigation on the site. We do host a variety of webinars during the week. 
I must apologize, there will not be any webinars next week as I will be out of town. And then, of course, those of you that are subscribers or trial members to Power Options, remember, you can take advantage of that free coaching session at any time, just there underneath the uh, main home tab. You can just click on free coaching there, and then you'll see the availability, excuse me, availability for the days coming up going forward where you can, excuse me, schedule a coaching session there. And it's essentially a 45-minute to 50-minute phone conversation will Ernie and I will answer any of your questions that you have to help you get more familiar with the tools as well. Now, one of the things, of course, I always wanted to mention when you first log on to Power Options, you see at the top here I was working on some stuff today at Married Puts, uh, Long Caller Selected, Bear Call Credits, Calendar Spreads, and looking at Long Strangles for earnings. But if you were logged onto your account, of course, or you just started your trial and you didn't see a strategy that you were interested in, let's say I want to trade long calls, buy calls speculating on a market movement or buy puts, simply click the other strategies tab and then you can customize which strategies you'd want to see if I wanted to add a covered call for example and long call, just buying a call, we'll go ahead and add that in and save the configuration. Right, and once that's done we'll see those available tools up here at the top. The new strategies that we select will be available in the tab navigation system up at the top. And of course, I want to remind everyone that in every strategy, you know that you have those uh, learning center links there discussing uh, different strategies to use inside the strategy itself. Here's a discussion on using weekly calls and puts for an upcoming earnings event. There's a free article there. And of course, using the Bollinger Bands filter to identify long calls or long puts as well. All right, I'm going to navigate back over to the main home tab. Um, I'm going to encourage you at any time to send in any questions that you have. Uh, I do have material that I can present today, but I didn't have any planned material because uh, this presentation is designed for you to have your questions answered. So at any time, you can go ahead and send in those questions. Um, one of the most popular ones I mentioned, of course, let me think of a good one here. Yeah, that would be a good one. I'll go ahead and use Boston Scientific. Uh, one of the most popular ones is questions that we get, I'm sorry, during these Friday presentations is how to manage a credit spread, a bear call credit or a bull put credit. You might be doing debit spreads as well and that, that sort of theme, same theme applies. Well, let me see, take a look here. Let's see a good one. That's a pretty good one. We'll take Foot Locker. So let's say over the past couple of weeks, I entered in a position with Foot Locker where for today's expiration, oh, we had gone ahead and we'd done a bear call credit on Foot Locker. And let's say we did it for August where we had sold the 50, mm, well, it didn't give me the dollar strike differences. Let's go to BSX. I'm sorry, that's a, that's a little better one there. Let's go to BSX. Okay. So let's say that we had gone ahead and we had sold the 24 call and bought the 26. So when the stock was trading around 23.80, we would have sold the 24. Let's just go ahead and call it about 50 cents. We would have bought the 26 for maybe 10. Okay, so we would have entered a bear call spread here with a 40 cent net credit on a two point strike difference. All right, so here's our risk reward profile for the position. Make sure it gets caught up there on the screen. All right, fantastic. But unfortunately, over the past few days, we probably wouldn't have done this, of course, because we had earnings come out this week for Boston Scientific, so I wouldn't have wanted to be in a bear call or a bull put. But the stock moved up and is now trading at 24.31. So it's moved above our short strike price. Our goal, of course, for this strategy would have been to have the stock remain below 24 at August expiration. Still could do that if it pulls back, and that way both calls expire worthless, we keep the entire net credit of 40 cents off of our risk of 160, so we have a 25% return on our investment. But now we're in a position where the stock has moved up above the short call strike. And if we go back to that view options field, we can see here that the buyback cost would probably be about 65 cents for the short call, and we might get about let's say seven cents for the long call. So we took 40 cents in, but it's looking like it's gonna cost us about 58 cents to close the position. Uh, so we're looking at a real, uh, reasonable loss there on this strategy. Now, one of the advantages of doing spreads this way, uh, well, let me go back one step, 
when I set up this spread, for our example, I set the strikes two points apart. Okay? That's a common thing I do whenever I am trading a weekly spread, for example, and I have single strike differences available. This is not a weekly, of course, just a standard August expiration. But with the two point spread in place, the reason I do that, one of the reasons why I do that in either a bull put or a bear call, is that I have the ability to manage the position now by just rolling up our short call strike price to the next strike without moving the long option. If I had sold the 24 and the 25 and now the stock's at 24.31 and I'm looking to roll the position, I don't have that opportunity. I can't buy to close the 24 and sell to open a 25 because I've already got a 25 purchased. I can't be short and long the same option uh, in the same account. So is it going to work? Looking at the numbers, I don't think so but we can try it. So let's go ahead and add the 24 call back in. This was an option that we sold to open. This is the pivot point, the important strike. The option that you sell on a spread is the important one. That's the one you gotta watch. So we're gonna go ahead and buy to close this one first, and we're gonna put in about 65 cents. We've got a bid of 63 and an ask of 66, so let's put that at 65. And now we're gonna roll up and we're gonna sell the 25 call for 19 cents. Now this should work, but it's not going to give us a very good credit. How do I mean? Well, we can see here that we already took in 50 cents, but we had to pay 65 cents to close that. So we have a difference here of a loss of 15 cents, but we're going to generate another 19 cents of credit here, so that's going to put us at a profit of 4 cents. The 10 cents is kind of already accounted for. Okay, but this could turn a potential losing trade into a winner right now, but the return is going to be drastically lower. Oh, actually, it's, it is at a loss at this point. Okay, so here we see that this one wouldn't be a good opportunity. We'd need to get about 15 or 16 cents more profit out of that roll, okay, from the 65 to the 19, in order to make this a viable adjustment. But I left the two strikes in between, so at least I have that choice available if the stock goes against me. So in that regard, on the bear call credit spread, we see that one didn't work. What are some of the other options that we could consider? And that one might be a little bit of a hesitation as well. Well, let me just review in general the seven ways you might consider rolling a credit spread that has moved slightly against you. Number one, no one wants to do, but let's be obvious we could just take the loss on the position and move on. Remember, we expected to make $40 or a 25% return. Right now, it would cost us $0.58 cents to liquidate the position, to close out of both legs. We'd pay $65 for the short and $0.10 cents, uh, roughly for the long we'd get back. I'm sorry, $0.07 cents we'd get back. So we'd have a loss of $0.18 cents or $18 per one contract. And that's not too bad. It's not a devastating loss. And if I had four spreads open that were each looking for this $0.40, cent, uh, $40 maximum profit, for example, and a risk of 160 well, taking an $0.18 cent loss on one still didn't take away the gains from two or three of the previous ones. Okay, We did lose $0.18 cents here, but we'd still have three other positions that were hopefully looking profitable. All right, number two, the common adjustment is to simply liquidate the position and roll up the strikes, and maybe roll out further in time depending on how much you have to pay. So what do I mean by liquidate? I'd close out this spread entirely. I'd buy to close the short and sell to close the long. And then now I try to create a new spread that was further out of the money for the bear call, where I might look to sell a 26 and buy a 28, or I might look to sell the 25 and buy a 27, for example, okay? But what I have to take into account is that I'm losing 18 cents off the bat already, right? We took in 40, it's gonna cost us 58 cents to buy it back, so I'm gonna have that loss there of the 18 cents. So let's scroll up here real quick. Yeah, I'm gonna just jot this down real, real close and liquidate. Okay, so it's liquidate and move up and strike. So let me clear out these drawings here and we'll put them back in for our review. So, if I look to just go one strike above and to keep in September or in August, 
we could sell to open the 25 call for maybe 18 cents. Well, that covers the loss we just took, but then we have to buy the other one at 5 cents. Okay, so that's not going to work. Okay, so let's just see why it wouldn't work. Remember, let's go ahead and sell the one contract after we've closed, and let's say we're, we're nice and we get 19 cents here for that call. And then the 27 call, let's say we only paid 5 cents for it. All right, so this would look like a 14 cent net credit. It's a lower return, okay? And now I have to factor in that I took a loss of 18 cents. So I'm going to factor that into the cost. So the cost of my long call, the 27, would be 23 cents. Now we've got a negative net credit, only losing $4, but it didn't really help us repair the position, did it? No. All right, so that's not going to work. So in this case, we'd have to go further out in time. So I could go to September, which is almost 50 days out in this case, because it doesn't offer the weekly option. So here, we get 41 cents, so we could buy the 27 for about 8 cents. Okay, so this would give us a higher net credit, and even when we factor in the 18 cent loss, so sell this for 41. We're going to buy this one, I think I said, for 8 cents, but let's factor in the 18 cent loss we already took, so this would be 26 cents. All right, so now we do get a net credit of $15, which is a possible 8% return if Boston Scientific stays below 25 at September expiration. So that's liquidating and rolling up. But now we have to sit on the position for 50 days and hope that the stock stays below 24.28. Here's the trick with the simple adjustment of just rolling up in strikes. We were wrong to begin with, weren't we? We entered a bear call spread at the 24 and 26 strike, and the stock went bullish on us and moved up to 24.28. So if it's still in a bullish trend, do I want to keep lowering my return by escalating this up in strikes? If Boston Scientific continues to move up, I might have to make the same adjustment before September and then to October, and if it keeps going up to 27 or 28, I don't know if it's going to do that, but if it follows the trend it's in right now, I have to keep rolling and keep getting a lower potential return as I roll the positions. Okay, so one quick review one more time. Number one, uh, liquidate and take the loss and move on, depending on what kind of loss it is. Now, it's possible, of course, that if Boston Scientific had gapped up to 2650 after earnings earlier this week, I would have been near the full loss and I probably wouldn't have wanted to take it at that time. But right now, I can get out of trouble quicker because remember our loss is only 18 cents. Number two, keeping the two strikes apart gives me that opportunity to close the short, buy to close the short leg of my spread, and move it up one. So it's just one roll, it's just one commission really, or a commission plus a little bit extra at your broker to roll the one. Okay, so you're just moving up the short call. But we saw that didn't work in this case. Number three is liquidate the entire position, liquidate your spread, and then roll to higher strikes. But if the trend continues, and you might even have to roll to higher strikes, and as we saw, also further out in time. But we saw the problem with that. Now we're in a position where we could make 8.1%, but we had to extend it to 50 days. And the trend right now is going against this idea. Right? So what's number four? We're going to have to go back to our original position. Number four that I like to use, a fourth way to manage the spread, is we can convert a bull to a bear. And four and five is really the same one. Well, it's the same idea done two different ways. So the fourth way I may manage the spread is taking this bear call credit spread, where it looks like the stock is moving against me, and convert it to a bull call debit with one move. Or, if you're really stuck on credit spreads, we could close the bear call and open a bull put. Now, in either case, you do run into the uh, construct or the concern of the stock reversing. Okay, so let's take a look here. Oh, I'm sorry, that's one and two is close and one. Okay, so let's go back to our original spread, folks. 50 and 10 cents. 
All right, so we would sold the 24 for August, 50 cents. We bought the 26 for 10. A week ago, two weeks ago, uh, whatever it was there. All right, okay. So I prefer, if I'm going to try to convert a bull to a bear, I prefer to do it, especially since we're talking about lower credits here. And sure, I'm probably trading 10 contracts or maybe five contracts. So this is actually $200 or $400 as opposed to 40. But if you're trading weekly options and you're trading even only five spreads or so, five contracts, excuse me, you may have a lower total max value. So the commissions really come into play. So what do we want to do here? We want to take this position that's moved against us because the stock is reversed, and I want to make it into a position that gives me a profit in this direction. Okay. Now, what is the one way we could do that? I could close out the, the entire bear call spread, pay a commission and a half or two commissions depending on your broker, and then open the bull put. Okay. So with the stock at 24, now I might sell the 24 put and buy the 22 or be a little safer, maybe sell the 23 and buy the 21, so it's deeper out of the money. But, of course, it could reverse back against us, but that would require four commissions. It's a viable choice. We'll look at that in a minute. What I prefer to do to keep commissions low is instead of changing the entire position out, what I'm going to do is convert this bullish spread, I'm sorry, this bearish spread into a bullish spread by selling to close my 26 call and buying to open a 22. It's kind of what we call the pendulum adjustment. I'm just going to swing this over. So then I'm going to be left with a short 24 call with the stock trading above it, but I'll be in a bull call debit spread. Okay. So is this a viable option? Usually for this to work, the stock has to be between the two strike prices. This one currently is, but I don't know if it's deep enough uh, in the money to work. But let's go ahead and take a look here. So what would I have to do? I'm just going to manage the long one now. I'd go to my broker and put in an order just to roll this long call. We're going to go ahead and sell to close this at 7. So we're losing 3 cents on it, not 70. All right, so we're losing 3 cents on it. And then I'm going to go ahead and buy. Nope, not going to work. That's a, that's a shame. But let's say we went ahead and bought this at 234. So I'm putting in more money into this position. We took in 50 originally, paid 10, got another 7 back. So now what we've done, we essentially have a 24 strike call open, a long 22 that we bought open as well. We have a debit of 187, the 234 minus the 57 plus the 10. So we are in a debit spread now, but we're following the direction of the stock. As long as the stock stays above 24, we'll have a gain of $13 or 3.4%. Remember, right now we're taking a loss of 18 cents. So with one move, the pendulum adjustment from the 26 in the bear call to the 22 gives us a bull call debit. The stock is currently above that. And if our trend is moving against us from the bear call, now we're in a bullish trend with one roll, we got into a position where we could potentially turn a loser of 18 cents right now into a winner of 13 if the stock continues to move up. Is there a risk that the stock could reverse, fall in price, and we could see a loss on this where we would have had a, a gain on the bear call? Absolutely. That's always the chance you have to take and the decision that you have to analyze when you're making an adjustment. You know, what's the risk of rolling the bear call up to the higher strike prices while well, the stock continues to move up? Is it going to continue to move up and go above that next strike prices? I'm not sure. I'd have to analyze the stock and look at the chart and uh, to make a decision based on that. Um, but here, turning the bear into a bull, as long as the stock continues on its current trend, if the stock moves up there, we've turned a loser into a winner. And we're doing it now, of course, because we don't want to let this loss get too big. All right. So review one. Let's, let's do the other one, and then we'll review the two together. So this one would take a loss of $0.18. Cents into a gain of 13. Oh, and by the way, one advantage of this over what we saw about rolling to the higher strike prices in this case, not every case, but in this case, we're still in August. Okay, we're only about 18 days away. We didn't have to go out to September, which was about 50 days away. 
Okay. All right. So let's just take a look back to our original position. Let's go back up there. <clears throat> All right. And now let's take a look at liquidating the bear call entirely. So we're going to add those two back in, the 24 and the 26. And we're going to buy to close the 24, of course, remember, for the 65 cents. Sell. There we go, 65 cents. And we're going to sell to, op sell to close our 26 call for 7. All right, now this isn't going to give us a, a profit and loss chart here, but there's our $18 loss. Now, let's go ahead and add in a bull put for August by selling the 24, it's good premium. We're gonna get about 34 cents. And then we're gonna buy the 22 for seven cents. Okay, and this looks like it'll be about the same. That's all right. Mm, not quite, is it? All right, so in this one we did the same thing. We converted a bear call credit to a bull put credit, but we didn't get as much of a potential return as we saw with the pendulum adjustment on the call options. Okay? By adding these all together, we would take in a 27 cent net credit, but remember we took the 18 cent loss, so here we are at only a $9 profit on the bull put if the stock stays above 24, where we were at a 13 cent. I know it's not a lot, but if we were doing larger contracts, let's say 10, it'd be $90 versus 130. Okay, so that would be significant based on the rate of return. It's not the 25% we originally wanted, on the spread, um, but it's relatively uh, not close, but we're turning a loser into a winner, and that's something to be happy with, okay? So converting here in this situation, this is the kind of analysis you wanna do when you're looking at a spread. Liquidating and then opening the bull put, you're only getting $9 back. And remember, the other caveat here, let's say your broker charges you a commission and a half to open a spread, so that's 1.5 here. Then you'd have to close the spread, which would be 1.5 commissions, and then you'd have to open the new spread, which is 1.5. So this comes out, of course, as we all know, to 4.5 commission costs to do the spread. With the pendulum adjustment, we had a 1.5 uh, contract there, a one and a half uh, contract size to open the spread, and then we probably only had to do maybe 1.2 or so to just roll the one option in the pendulum adjustment, okay? So that's what we're kind of looking at here. Now, okay, someone came in and commented, what do you mean by 1.5? All right, I don't know about your broker, um, but I know that at my broker, and I know Options Express is kind of like this too, if I open a contract, um, it might cost me 7.95, this is with Fidelity. And then of course, in certain cases, you know, the 7.95 actually becomes 8.70, they add, you know, an extra uh, 80 cents or so, 75 cents or so um, for other charges or selling to open, whatever. So it might be somewhere between 7.95 and 8.70. Now, if I put in a spread order at Options Express, they're not gonna charge me the $15. Usually it's gonna be a little bit less. It might be somewhere around 11.95 or 12.95, okay, uh, for that, and then maybe a little bit extra. But the case is here, I'm not paying double. I'm not paying 1740 to open two legs when I enter a spread. They're charging me a little bit less for the two commissions. So I get in, let's say at 1295. So that's the open. But when I close it, sure, I could liquidate the spread and they might do the same 1.5, but then I have to open another one. But when I go to roll an option, when I, when I sell to close an option, buy another one, as with the pendulum adjustment, Fidelity is only gonna charge me that 870. Okay, so I'm getting in at a lower price here. It's not double, but then I'm still only paying 870. So the commissions for the pendulum adjustment here are gonna be naturally much lower than paying 4.5 commissions for doing all legs, but it's still only 1.5. It's not two commissions. But again, that depends on your broker. And if you do pay two full commissions for entry, for exit, and then for opening a new spread, well, you're paying six commissions versus where you'd only be paying three or maybe three and a half using the pendulum adjustment. Okay, but you wanna compare the two because they are, in essence, parity trades. We've got the same sort of setup now where we've converted our bear spread that was here, right, and losing a little bit of money right now, losing $18, 
into a bull spread because the stock is going in our direction. All right, so those are essentially some of the main ways to do it. So what are we talking about? In one, take the loss if the loss is not too big on your spread. Okay, take the loss and look for a new position. A second way to consider managing it is if you did leave the two points apart, just roll the short leg up one if profitable. Right? You don't want to do it if it locks you into a loss. So roll short leg if you were two strikes apart up one. Okay, so you're still in a spread, but your margin requirement would be less now too as well. To keep that in mind. Number three, um, we talked about liquidating the spread. Okay, so we could liquidate the entire spread and then roll to higher strikes in the case of a bear call. We'd roll to lower strikes in the case of a bull put that went against us. But we also saw here that this might require us to roll higher and further. So we're getting a smaller return when we rolled higher and further out than we would by just doing the pendulum adjustment here. Um, it was about even, but rolling higher and further. But now I have to sit on the position for 50 days to realize the full profit. Okay. Number four is the pendulum adjustment. Okay. And that was just rolling the long option to create the opposite. Okay? So in a bear call, I'd sell to close my out of the money call and I'd buy an in the money call. On the bull put, let me just draw that there, it's not great, but yeah, so we do that on the bear call. If I'm in a bull put that started to move against me, I would sell to close the out of the money put and buy to open the in the money put to create the bear put debit. It's just a little less of a roll to do. All right, number five is liquidate the existing spread right now. And then, of course, we would create or open, I should say, the opposite. So that was that six-leg transaction that we're looking at above. All right, so I'd close, I, here's my original bear call. We sold the 64 call, bought the 26. I'd have to close it. And then we'd open the bull put. All right, so we're doing the opposite because the stock has reversed trend on us. Okay, so those are the five ways, five main ways that you might consider rolling the spread by itself. Now, what do I mean by main ways? On these five ways, we're focusing just on the spread. We're either closing it to take a loss, we're adjusting the bear call by one strike and staying in it. We liquidated and rolled up to a higher bear call. We turn the bear call into a bull call debit with the pendulum adjustment, or we could turn the bear call into a bull put by liquidating and opening the opposite spread. Remember, that would be roughly six commissions or what we feel would be about four and a half commissions. Okay. Now, what I mean by just focusing on the spread itself is we're still keeping a vertical spread. Other opportunities might exist for you. Um, that may or may not pan out depending on your expectation of the stock and your risk tolerance. For example, let's go back to spread number one. Here's our bear call spread. It's moved up against us. We know we're losing 28 cents, or 18 cents, my apologies. But we feel that now that this has happened, that the stock's probably going to pull back, and it's going to go back below 24 in the next 18 days, but it's probably not going to drop too much below 22. In this case, we probably have to focus on 23. So a sixth way to manage your bear call spreads is to create an iron condor. But this one's a little bit tougher to swallow, okay? It is a viable adjustment if things work out the way that you want. But things have to work out the way that you want. So we don't want to do the 24 because that would create an iron butterfly, okay? That's where we'd have a position at the same strike and the only way we'd really profit is if probably the stock stayed right at 24. And we're not going to get a lot for this, but let's go down to the 23 strike and the 21. So we're going to add a bull put credit spread on top of our bear call, which is going to create the iron condor, okay, combination of two. And let's say that we're going to go ahead and get 12 cents here. We're going to be generous to ourselves at midpoint, and we're going to get 6 cents here. Okay, so we're going to sell to open the 23 put for 12 cents, and we're going to buy to open D21 
for six cents. All right. Now, this does enhance our return. In theory, we should keep the same risk threshold. What do I mean by that? Well, we had a two-point spread with our bull bear call originally. Now, if I had a bull put on top of that, we create the iron condor position. So now as long, if I think a stock's going to pull back, but I think it's going to stay between 23 and 24, this would give me a boost in the return from 40 cents, not a lot, but from 40 cents up to 46. Most brokers would probably see that this was an iron condor and let you keep the margin. All right, so if you enter an iron condor, if you enter all four legs together, most brokers will only charge you the margin on one side of the spread or the other because only one can go against you. Both can't go against you at the same time. Okay? But it is possible that since we're legging into this bear call, I'm sorry, legging into this iron condor by adding the bull put spread, the second side over here, that my broker might see this as two separate spreads and not a condor. So I might get charged the uh, $2 that we had here, which was really $1.60. And now I'm collecting six cents of net credit. So my next risk would be $1.94. So my broker may actually require me, of course, to put up the three fifty four. I'm sorry, three, yeah, three fifty four roughly, instead of the one fifty four that we would have right now with a net credit of forty six on a two point spread. Okay, so that's one of the things that can become convoluted with this type. You'd have to put up more money for the iron condor. And of course, the problem here with the iron condor fixing a bear call spread with an iron condor or a bull put by adding the other side is that yes, if it pulls back as you expect and stays within this range, you're going to be looking good. But if the stock continues its trend upwards, you've only hedged this by six cents. Okay, so if it continues to go up, and let's say it goes up to 25.50, we're still looking at a loss of $90. Remember, we could get out with a loss of $18 right now, or we could have converted to the bull call debit spread, which would show a gain of $13 for the same time span, even if the stock moved up. Here would be at a loss of $90. And of course, if the stock really reverses and it drops back down to, is that 22.54, it really pulls back, now we're at a loss on the downside. We would have that same loss, of course, if I did convert it to a bull call debit with a pendulum adjustment, or if I converted it to the uh, bull put spread by closing both legs out. So the Condor, you might, naturally, you'll probably be in other positions, higher price stocks, it might give you more premium for rolling or adding the second spread there to create the iron Condor instead of just six cents in our example. But that's kind of the pitfalls of doing it. You haven't stopped this from occurring. Okay, um, so that could still go against you and you could still suffer a large loss in that scenario if it still continues the trend, all right? Now, <clears throat> before I review, uh, you know, before we go back to that, I did mention there's about seven or eight ways. There's more ways, but this one of adding the different legs to the position to create the iron condor, which is still essentially a vertical spread, but you've got four legs now. You've got two ways to lose. Um, another management technique which negates, gets us out of the credit spread realm, where we're not doing a standard vertical spread anymore. Here we created iron condor, which is a vertical spread, but it's a little bit different. It's not directional. Another opportunity that we have, okay, the stock has moved up. It's above our 24 strike. If we do feel that that trend is going to continue and the stock is going to continue to move up, a seventh way to adjust the position which is speculative, but it can work, is to simply buy to close your short call and leave the long open. Okay, so what would we do here? We'd go into August, and I'd buy the 24 back. Oh, the price changed on us today, and the last, uh, last, day, last run came through a little while ago. So let me go ahead and put in 62 cents now. Well, no, we'll keep it at 58, where we were when we started this to keep it fair. So remember, we took in 40 cents. My buyback cost, we were looking at it earlier, was about 58, no, it was 65, I'm sorry. It was 65, the total loss in the spread was 18 cents. So it was gonna be a 65 buyback, that's about right. Let's go ahead and submit that. And what am I looking at here? Now, even though the stock's only at 24.28, and I've got a deep out of the money call, by the way, but if the stock, if we really think the stock's gonna continue to move up in the next 19 days, by selling, buying to close the short, we now have a long call position and out of the money 26 call 
where our cost is $225, our risk is $225. Okay, so this is very speculative. And I didn't include this with the first five steps because we've now negated the vertical spread concept. All right, we're no longer in a spread that requires margin to be in there. Um, we're in a directional speculative position, and it's, lack of a better term, double speculative, because not only is the strategy speculative that we need the stock to move up, we're owning a deep out of the money call in this case. Um, so that's gonna you know, come back to maybe not haunt us, but we need a quicker movement in the stock now before we start losing our total cost. And true, we only pay 10 cents for the long call, but the total cost in goes up to 25 now, okay? Because we've got that long call in place I'm sorry, for a cost of 25, ignore the 225, I apologize, that's looking at something different. So really what we have now, let's get that correct, really what we have now is just a long call. After we take the loss for buying to close the short, we've got a long call for $25 out of the money at 26. So if the stock does continue to move up, maybe this long call will go to 20 cents, 28 cents, 29 cents, we can get a small profit but we're going away from the idea of the vertical spread now by just closing one of the short options. We're following the trend, but we're in just an out of the money long call. All right, so let's review that real quick. What are our, what are our ways from, let's go back to the bear call. Let's put this back to 10. All right, and our 24 call originally sold at 50 cents. All right, so there was our original bear call that has moved against us. The stock's trading slightly above it. Loss now would be, remember, 18 cents if we liquidated the position. Okay, so what are our roll ideas? Number one, take the loss and move on. If it's a reasonable loss, it's a manageable loss, we want to maybe do that now so the stock, if it continues to trend against our original concept, we don't take a larger loss on the spread. We don't have to close it for a larger loss. Okay, so number one, just take the loss. Number two we talked about was if we set it two strikes apart, which I prefer to do in my spreads, we'd roll up one if profitable. Okay, so we roll the short. Roll up the short one strike, keep the long in place. Now we've still got a bear call spread with higher strikes but only do that, of course, if it's profitable. Naturally, you really want to do only any of these adjustments if it's profitable, and that's how this tool helps you do that, to manually run the adjustments. Number three, we talked about liquidating the entire spread right now and rolling the strikes further up, or further out of the money, for lack of a better term, and further out in time, so liquidating and rolling up and potentially out. In this case, we had to roll out to September, which was 50 days away. So we'd be sitting on the position for 50 days and the return was very small. All right, so that would be rolling up and out. In a bull put, you might call it rolling down and out. Okay, now number four, and of course we don't like doing necessarily this one if it looks like the trend is strong, because in either case, rolling up one strike or liquidating and rolling up, we're still trying to buck the trend of the current stock. All right? We're trying to force a bearish position on a stock that's moving up. We're just hoping it stays below our bearish marker. All right, number four, with one movement, the pendulum adjustment, move the long to create an opposite. So we'd move the long to from the bear call. This would convert from the bear call to a bull call. And we saw there we'd have a profit of maybe 13 or so, $13 or so. Number five was close the spread or liquidate the spread and open the opposite. So we close our bear call and then we'd open a bull put. Okay, so close the spread, open the opposite because we want to try to follow the trend perhaps now that's opposite of what we want. Number six was add the opposite to create the condor. This would could potentially increase your monetary requirement into the position. We saw that we could get a slightly higher profit if the stock stayed between the short put strike price and the short call strike price in that scenario. When we created the uh, the iron condor there, it's not gonna be the best drawing. 
none of these are. I do apologize for that, but there we go. Okay, all right, so we would have created the iron condor here in this case. The margin might have increased. We might be profitable in this range, but now we can lose both ways. The first five, we could still lose, but it would only be one directional. Okay, we could only lose in one direction or the other if we guessed wrong. And then number seven would be just close the short to create a long option, which is speculative. Okay, you've got to think that the, in order for me to think, if I was in this bear call spread where I sold the 24 call on Boston Scientific and bought the 26, and the stock's at 24.28, in order to buy to close this call, we'd pay 65 cents, so we'd own the August 26 call at 25 cents. I have to be really bullish on this new trend. I really think the stock's going to continue to move for that to work. But we could close the short, leaving us with a long call or a long put in the case of a bull put. But that's more speculative, and we need a larger movement there in order to profit on that new position. We hear other things about, oh, of course we hear them, but we also are aware of them but other things such as converting a vertical spread into a broken wing butterfly to repair the position, adding another two or three legs, or creating a ratio calendar spread to repair the bear call. Sometimes that gets too complicated in my opinion. And I know this seems like a lot. This seems like a lot of numbers we just went through on just managing a bear call credit spread. But at the same time, when we start to add in different months to expiration in the same trade, or we start to add three legs on top of an existing two legs to create um, some kind of ratio spread, or if we try to, maybe broken wing butterfly might be okay, it's kind of like creating the condor, but you're doing it a little bit differently, that might be okay. But and you've now got four working legs, and you may still have two chances to lose in two directions. The first five here, still only give you a directional. Well, taking the loss, we took the loss and we got out of it. Uh, rolling up the short one strike leaves us in a bear call. If the stock continues to move up, we could lose, of course. But if it stays down, we've turned a loser into a winner. Uh, number three, liquidating and rolling up and out the entire spread. Of course, we could still lose if the stock continues to move up. But if it starts to fall back, we've turned a loser into a winner. The pendulum adjustment. This is where we can convert the bear to the bull, or if we were in a bull put, we convert it to a uh, bear put debit spread by doing the pendulum adjustment. We could lose if the stock reverses and falls back, but if it continues up, we've turned a loser into a winner. And likewise with number five, close the spread and open the opposite. So those are still only one direction to lose. The condor can give us two ways to lose. And converting it to a long call can just give us one way to lose. If the stock stays where it is or falls, we'll lose the entire $25, which is higher than the loss we would have taken right now by liquidating the BSX bear call spread. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that you'll always have a higher call. You will, but I'm not saying you'll always have a higher risk with doing a long call. Most of the time you will. If you buy to close a short to leave the long open, that will increase the cost of the long, and it might be a larger loss. But if I'm at a five-point spread, I'm at a $2 loss right now, and closing the short, leaving the long open, only puts me in a max loss of 210, that might be perfectly fine. Okay, I was willing to take a $2 loss, I might be willing to take a 210, especially if the trend looks like it's going against me, so I can adjust the position. Okay, so, but adding those other complex ones, and broken wing butterfly is one of the other more popular ways to manage a credit spread that's going against you to convert it to a broken wing butterfly, but you're adding more legs into it, you still might have two ways to lose. Adding a ratio spread or a ratio calendar spread to repair a call position can get tricky. And you know, it, it's more simple than you think. Um, an easy way to uh, create sort of a, you know, a ratio spread as I'm saying is that, well, the stock's moving against me. So what if I do now, instead of selling the close the short, and I'm expecting the stock to continue to move up, what if I bought another 26 call here for seven cents? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look. See, in this case now, we get this little bump. Now we could still lose 167. Remember our maximum loss on the bear call was 160 if the stock was trading anywhere above 26. Now if it goes to 27 or 28, we could start seeing a win by converting this into a ratio call. 
but is this realistic? Okay, we were looking at positions, well, how could we set ourselves up to lose less if it was at 2650, if it really ramped up in the next uh, 19 days to maybe 26 or 2650? Here we don't get to that upper break even unless the stock's trading at 2767. I have to really analyze, is that a viable or realistic target price for the stock in the next 19 days, even though it is in a bullish trend, okay? That's a little bit above a 10% move in the next 19 days. Possible, not likely. And again, the lower break even now is at 24.33, so we're still at a slightly profitable zone now. We've changed that. That's good. We've, we've made this into a slight profit here, and we were still profitable on the bear spread as far as if it stayed at the same price. But in this case, we've adjusted that a little bit, uh, the break even from 24.40 down to 24.33, and the profit to the downside, though, is only going to be about 33 here. Well, that's not bad at all, is it? Because we were expecting 40 to begin with, so if it does stay down, it reverses and moves back down, we'll make 33 instead of 40, but look, the gap up to get to a profit now is very far. Okay, you're going to need that to go above like 2765, 2767 in order to start profiting by converting it into a ratio spread. So the ratio spread might be a viable choice, but you've extended your profit lines and your upper and lower break even to something that might not be realistic here. Okay, now it's good, it's real, excuse me. It's very realistic that it could revert back and just stay below 24.33 and then maybe even below 24 and we get that profit there of $33, which isn't too bad. But to expect it to go up to 27.67 and have a profit where we could have converted to just bullish spreads or converted to just the long call at 26. If I thought the stock was going to be at 27.27, okay, or 27.67, I'm sorry, at break even or anywhere near there, if I had just closed the short and left the long open with 25 cents, and in August the stock's at 27.67, our 26 call would have been worth, sorry, it was 25 cents, so it would have been worth $1.67, so we would have profited $1.40 here by just closing the short and leaving the long open. That would be a profit of $1.40 at 27.67 instead of break even with a ratio spread here as well, okay? <laughs> Um, question comes in from James. He says, what is your opinion of legging into a spread? <sighs> it's dangerous. Um, if I legged into a spread, honestly, um, and based on my account size, <laughs> if I was legging into a spread, I'd have to buy the option first, most likely. I'd buy the long option first, then as the stock moved, look to sell at a higher premium. Okay, so on a bear call, it's tricky. I'd have to buy a call almost at a higher price than when the stock fell, sell the lower strike call, which doesn't make any sense. Why? Because when I enter a bear call credit spread, I'm not going to sell the call first and then wait for a better opportunity to open the long because I'm in a naked call, which has infinite upside. If, like in this case, I'm wrong in the direction and it moves up, number one, I could suffer severe losses, especially if there's an unrealized gap. But at the same time, the margin requirement for opening a naked call is very large. On the other side, which you mentioned, you know, um, your opinion of legging in stock drops after earnings, you sell an out of the money put, then as that fills, buy the further out of the money put for a better spread. Well, sure. But again, if I sold the naked put, which has the same risk reward profile as a covered call, at a strike here, well, if you're using margin, which is dangerous, but if you're using margin, so what do we have here? We have a stock that's fallen, we think it's bottomed. I'm going to sell the 24 put here for a decent price on Boston Scientific. Now, as it starts to move back up, now I can buy that 23 put, I'm sorry, the 23 put or the 22 put for a much lower price. But the whole time I'm holding this, if I did one contract, I would have had to have had on hold in my account $2,400 to cover the obligation of the naked put. If I did 10 contracts, be 24,000 until I buy this next option to cancel that obligation and make this only a two point spread or a 2,000 point spread I'm putting up more money which might be negating the concept of me entering into a credit spread in the first place because I wanted that lower margin requirement and you run the risk of large losses okay so it's dangerous 
James, legging into spreads can be dangerous. Now, it sounds like the perfect approach, right? In theory, we all want to get the best bang for our buck. So if I'm looking at a bull put or a bear call credit spread, for example, absolutely, I would want to sell the call, oh, geez, I'd want to sell the put on my bull put credit spread when I get the max value. When is that? Oh, the stock has dropped for a sudden event, but we think it's an overreaction and it's going to move back up. So I sell the put now for a great premium. And as it moves up, guess what's going down in price? All these lower puts. So I'm going to get this at the best premium and I'm going to go ahead and buy this at the worst premium. If your timing's perfect, that can work. But if the stock drops and your expectation is, oh, it's an overreaction, it's going to come back up, I sell the 24 put for Boston Scientific and I do 10 contracts, so I've got uh, $24,000 uh, on hold in my account for that position, okay? And I'm wrong and the market pushes it down to 22 or 23, well now, I, or I'm sorry, 22 or 21, now I've got to go ahead and scramble to either buy the stock to cancel the obligation or buy to close this put. And it's a two or three point loss, but I was probably only getting, in this example we know, 50 or 60 cents. So I take a $2 loss, now I'm at a loss of 140, okay? The benefit of opening the spread off the bat is that you get that margin requirement settled, okay? You get the two point margin right away. So you don't have to, you're just putting up $2 per contract. So you do 10 contracts, that's only $2,000. Instead of selling the 24 put of 10 contracts and putting up $24,000 on holding your account to place the trade. And remember, legging into a bear call by trying to sell at the best price after the stock is, or index has moved up, but now you feel it's going to move back down. Well, sure, you sell this, but now it's a naked call, which is the risky op riskiest options investment you have. The only thing riskier than selling a naked call is selling two naked calls, okay? So if the stock continues to move up, you have an obligation to deliver stock here that you don't own. So if it gaps up for some other reason and really takes off, now you're kind of in a tough spot where it's going to cost you a lot of money um, to do that, okay? All right. Yeah, and you see, James says the stock would have to have a very large move. And again, it's possible. It's just not something that I do. And if I did leg into a spread, it, it sounds counterintuitive, but I would do it the opposite way. All right. So I look to pay the lowest for the call in a bear call spread, meaning I'd buy the call after the stock had a fall. I'm still bearish on it. But if it has that little retracement after the earnings, let's say it drops 10% per earnings, and over the next few days it has a 5% increase, okay, then what I could go ahead and do is sell the call at that time for a better premium uh, than I would have gotten when I opened the spread. But again, the risk there is if it just keeps collapsing, then I just lose everything I could have had. I could sell a lower call at that price to get a better premium also. So there are all possibilities there. All right, well, it's essentially 5.28 p.m. Eastern time. I guess that was our review uh, for um, managing bear call credit spreads. We reviewed the seven different ways to manage a bear call and talked about some of the ways that you would apply that maybe to a bull put. Uh, why do I mention that? Um, well, first off, 